Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Carolina Boreman. Uh, I'm the head of global design operations at IKEA Retail Inca Group. I've been at IKEA for a few years now and in various roles, uh, but this particular role is the most exciting one to me. I don't only get to be part of building and molding the experience design team, drive change and innovation in the digital channels, but I also get to work with amazingly skilled and friendly people like Carola here. Hi, I'm Carola. Uh, I'm a product manager at Work Co. and I've been partnering with IKEA on their digital transformation for the last two years or so. Yeah, and together we are very excited to talk about how we, since February, uh, have been building SCOPA, IKEA's design system, uh, not only to unlock innovation, but also to drive change uh, in ways of working and alignment across the product organization. As most of you know, hopefully, IKEA is a global furniture retailer, uh, and I hope that you, as I said, know and love us. In 2019, uh, we had 433 stores in 53 countries. We had over 1 billion physical store visits and 211,000 co-workers worldwide. But as we are all aware, during 2020, we had a global pandemic impacting retail worldwide. Stores closed, people spent more time uh, in their homes, and this started pushing life at home even more to the front for, for, forefront than before. And during 2020, visits to IKEA.com have increased by 33%, and online sales have remarkably been boosted uh, as consumers turn to online shopping instead of visiting, visiting physical stores, basically. Uh, this proves to us, um, as a brand, we are trusted to deliver on our promise uh, and making, of making life better for the many people. But it also puts a responsibility on us to be able to deliver better digital products and better digital experiences than ever before. And this is the whole point and the whole uh, idea around the design system and the work that we've been doing with Working Co. and Carola's team for the last six months. Working Co's mission is to make great products for everyday use. Um, and that from the beginning resonated with IKEA's similarly democratic approach to retail. Our proven ability to ship and operationalize products at scale also made us a good match for IKEA and its growing global reach. Together, we've been able to realize several of their digital aspirations. Yeah, and in 2018 uh, is actually was actually the first project we, we started together, and that was the redesign of the IKEA Shoppable app. Uh, Working Co. was brought in as a product development expert company uh, and were asked to bring inspiration and e-com into the app. Today, this app is being used by over 8 million customers, and it's contributing with uh, 94 million euros uh, in new online revenue each year. And of course, this success prompted more collaboration. And in 2019, we applied the learnings from IKEA Shoppable app uh, cooperation uh, to redesign IKEA.com, uh, making it not only look and feel more modern and sleek, but also making it more mobile friendly. And as a part of that, uh, we also started looking at the in-store kiosk uh, solutions that we have. And this was to ensure that IKEA was standing up to a more cohesive omni-channel experience and ensure that our customers uh, have the same um, digital uh, experience across all our channels. And this is about the time that I entered the picture. Uh, and I saw that although we were driving, uh, we had a thriving digital ecosystem, uh, it had not been brought into a cohesive system for us to scale across the vast organization that is IKEA. Um, we also knew that we couldn't continue to power great customer experiences without improving the day-to-day -day workflows and tools for our designers and our developers. And with that realization, we started working towards what would make the most impact over time. And that was creating a comprehensive design system. Uh, so to create the system, uh, we needed to, first of all, get our whys straight. So why do we need to spend all of this time and effort, uh, not to mention uh, money, uh, to do this? 
and what will it support and how can we motivate our superiors and our investors to actually go for this. So today we know that our main challenges is the consistency and the cohesion of the products. The result of many teams working over a lot of time in many different products simultaneously without actually sharing an agreed uh, and common language. So we figured that if we align brand design and engineering by introducing this common language for all, uh, we would actually solve that problem. And in the process, we would also support faster time to market. We would drive change in the ways of working. And we would also support the product team's anatomy, uh, all the while uh, keeping a tighter grip on what is done and where. So Ingvar Kamprad, the founder of IKEA, invented the flat pack in an attempt to make delivery of uh, furniture more cost efficient and effective. The flat pack system is based on loose parts, bolts, screws, wooden pieces, etc. Uh, but if they're assembled in the correct way, uh, make up a piece of furniture, a predefined piece of furniture. And the idea is to be able to reuse as many pieces as possible uh, in as many furniture items as possible and to make the assembly uh, as foolproof as possible as well. Uh, and it has to be clear, simple, effective, uh, so that anyone, no matter who you are, uh, can assemble a piece of furniture, yeah, right? So this is actually what we're aiming for. Uh, this is our nor North Star. If we can build a system that is as simple and as effective as the IKEA flat pack with reusable pieces, if correctly put together, uh, they will create amazing user experiences. And then we know that we will be successful. So as we set our goals, uh, we needed a tool to make it a reality. Uh, and Figma was actually our go-to for several reasons, but the most important ones were, were that this is a social tool with built-in collaboration. You can work on things anywhere in the world and see each other simultaneously. And even more important to us, it has its own design system feature. And this was extremely important for us to be able to move forward very quickly without having to reinvent the wheel and uh, you know, start doing things from scratch. And then once we've established what we're setting out to do and the tools that we would need to do it, uh, we did what any good product team uh, would do. We turned to the makers at IKEA Digital uh, to get a deeper understanding of their needs and how such a system would benefit them. And what we learned is that a successful system could only become a trusted authority for digital product design if it could be easy to access and understand uh, it should provide context and visibility into the work that is happening. And it should also foster communication and the exchange of ideas between teams. And finally, it has to equip, them, equip the teams with the tools to elevate their craft and focus on the innovation and not trying to solve design problems or designing things problems. Um, and then just as uh, any, just like uh, with any product, uh, we used all of this uh, to inform an MVP. And our MVP was made up of four key parts that we hoped would set us up to deliver the maximum impact over six months. And we agreed that we would tackle and roll out each part progressively to be able to provide incremental value to teams um, and then fold it up into an internal website that itself would serve as a living and breathing example of the system. We named the site Skapa, uh, which means to create in Swedish. And um, this was definitely a nod to our goal to empower teams to self-start and innovate. Um, and what made us successful was not only the tools and resources we provided, but also the baseline we set for where and how people work with the system as well as interact with it. So to do this, we used Figma to set up a project and file structure and templates and guidelines for how to perform key workflows, such as prepping files for production or even doing um, A-B testing. And we also established an open and ongoing dialogue with product teams through the use of public forums. So things like Jira, Slack, um, and recurring work shares or demos mm -hmm. to ensure that they not only felt a part of what was being created, but that it was relevant to them. Once we had our ways of working in place, we took a look at the UX of the various products we had shipped and asked the question, what do they all have in common? 
And how do we surface those characteristics for others to draw from and use, you know, on any product? So we studied what we had shipped um, and then abstracted those common characteristics into a baseline set of styles. So things like color, typography. And in the process, we made sure to prove them out too. Um, so checking that they tie back to the core brand, uh, things like, you know, blue and yellow, the primary colors, um, and also made sure that that extended to real world use cases in digital. Finally, we made sure that these qualities, once established, remain painless to use and maintain by connecting design to code seamlessly through the use of design tokens. In addition, we look beyond um, some traditional UI qualities to establish a similar source of truth for two other known pain points. Um, the first is how we communicate as a brand. So um, setting a tone of voice for IKEA and digital, um, as well as you know, UX writing um, for critical functions. And then perhaps a bit less conventionally, uh, we looked at how to use movement to simplify a complex user flow or add a bit of personality to a common interaction. Delving a bit more deeply into the system um, to the tangible core of our MVP components. So these are the building blocks of IKEA's interfaces. Um, they have been delivered progressively as plug and play Figma design assets and React code. Um, and they've been packaged up with detailed usage guidelines um, to make it you know, combined into a very easy startup kit for designers. And we actually took this concept of the startup kit further by building out a set of guidelines showing how to combine these components to solve common UX problems like how should a customer be able to sign up for IKEA? Um, you know, how do, how do they engage in something like a form? Um, and with this, the goal of this was really to make it easy for anyone, even a day one designer, to be able to pick up the system, which is really important as IKEA uh, has been Very scaling. Important. Yeah. And an interesting side note here, um, this is actually something we had deprioritized for some time mm -hmm. because we had assumed that this was common knowledge um, that, you know, just through person to person sharing, people get up to speed super quickly. And while that's definitely true, um, what we heard it, that was interesting is that designers actually see their way into the system through these types of guidelines or scenarios. Um, so it's become much more of a priority for us to build. And actually, we've evolved the IA of the um, of the centralized site to reflect a UX guideline driven structure. Um, so that was, you know, an interesting learning for us. Um, so all of this uh, was centralized into uh, our hub, which is scapa.com. And we're really excited that this is uh, going to be released to the organization in November. Um, and it'll contain the details of everything I just walked through. Um, and we expect it to grow and evolve as IKEA grows and evolves um, over time. It's extremely, extremely exciting. <laughs> um, and as we continue on that journey, we do have some trips, uh, tips and tricks to share with you guys to help you on yours. You might be asking yourself um, the same thing Carolina and I were asking ourselves six months ago. Um, how do I know if my organization is ready for a design system and all of the change that comes with it? Um, I think if you see that your organization is looking for ways to mature its product capabilities, whether that's by investing in their user experiences to be more effective and cohesive, meeting users at key touch points, um, or growing their design capabilities, then it's also likely to benefit because uh, from a design system because it's so much more than components. Mm -hmm. um, it's a means of empowering product teams and the organization as a whole to ship great work at speed. Um, so we hope this is useful for you guys. Something else we wanted to share uh, while Carolina and, and I are in a bit of a transitional moment mm -hmm. on our project um, is how we evaluate our work. So some key questions we've been asking ourselves um, include whether we've made a measurable impact on the day-to-day -day workflows of our users or whether product teams are able to more proactively and continuously iterate. These have been helpful as we plan in our roadmap and where we want to focus our efforts next. And finally, two more parting thoughts from us on how to set yourself up for success. Thank you. In this journey, uh, we've moved really fast and we've iterated a lot, like really a lot. 
Uh, we've learned that we need to treat SCAPA as a living and breathing product and never make the mistake of thinking that one solution will fit everyone. Um, more or less like all products, right? There's no difference between this and, and a regular product. So uh, to make your design system a success, you need to know your users and you need to understand what impacts their work the most. Their needs, they will inform uh, your roadmap and be the base for understanding the efforts needed to execute on it. And you're not going to get it right the first time. Trust us, you're not. <laughs> so make sure that you leave room for iteration and encourage your users to give feedback. That's very important because without your users, you don't get the right system. And the second thought is that a de design system needs to be relevant to your users. To make the most of this, you need to understand not uh, all users have the same level of maturity. This is something that we learned the hard way as, uh, as we thought that our designers would just pick this up and be happy with it. It turns out that it's not as simple. Mm -hmm. Some will need more support than others and planning out how to best support the rollout of your design system is equally as important as advocating for it and making people understand that it exists. So knowledge is not the same as usage and a design system is only as useful if it, as, it's, as it is <laughs> and it's only useful if it's actually being used across your whole organization. So with that, we thank you for being here with us today. Uh, we really loved sharing our work with you. And uh, if you need to get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. This is how to, how to reach us on email or on LinkedIn. Um, and I think we're going to skip questions, unfortunately, since there are so many of you. Um, it'd be a bit tricky to, to track you down. But please do shoot us a note. Absolutely. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.